اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد ونسلی ونسلم علی رسول الكریم اما بعد السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ The month of Rajab. The month of Rajab is the month now that we are in when we follow the Islamic calendar. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated from Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered a sermon on the occasion of the Hajjatul Wida. And in the khutbah, he said something very, very interesting which I want to briefly explore with you today and inshallah next week we can continue idhnillahi ta'ala the prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna zamana qad istadara ka hay'atihi yawma khalaqa allahu samawati wal ard the time time has returned back to its original state the day allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth we'll talk about what this means from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does it mean for time to return back to its original state? In, in summary, before we, we go into more detail, and I'll go into detail later on, is that uh, the Jahili Arabs, they change the order of the months. There were certain months for them which were haram for them, for them to engage in fighting. And what they did was they changed those months. In other words, they changed the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala passed to them from Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam to suit their whims, their desires. They changed the months around. So four months were haram for them to engage in fighting. And because they wanted to carry on fighting, and they also wanted to make sure at the same time they were following Allah's commands, they said, okay, we'll change the months around. We'll alternate months. And as you can imagine, if you change the months around, you muddle up things. Right? If January is moved to where September is, for example, then the months over time will become muddled up. So this is what happened. So their calendar was muddled up, if you like. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he gave the khutbah on Hajjatul Wida'i, he says this, that the time has returned back to its original self. And I will explain what that means, maybe today or next week as well. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this in the khutbah of Hajjatul Wida'i, his last sermon. It's a very lengthy sermon. And I believe, and we should all understand this, that whatever uh, the discussions that take place, this khutbah should be read by every Muslim and implemented by every Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ talks about many things that plague humanity today. Racism. Discrimination is a, is, a, is a bimari, is a sickness on this planet, right? You only have to follow current events, which is very colored by discrimination. Uh, and even sexism, right? Uh, this gender disparity, which is alien to Islam, by the way, right? These things are completely alien to human society and the Prophet ﷺ on his final khutbah, his final sermon addressed many of these things as though he, he knew what humanity is going to be plunged into time and time again. And he says, as to isna ashra shahran He says that the year is 12 months. The year is 12 months. Minha arba'atun hurum From those, from those 12 months, four of those are, if you like, sacred months. Four of those are sacred months. Salasatun mutawaliyatun. Three of them are consecutive. They follow one another. Zul Qa'da wa Zul Hijjah wa Muharram. So Zul Qa'da, which is the month in wherein you prepare to go for Hajj. Zul Hijjah is the month when you go for Hajj. And Muharram is when you come back from Hajj as well. So these three months, one of the reasons the ulama mentioned these three months were singled out also was that um, people were going for Hajj, so they needed safety. Right, and if you remember, in those days, uh, uh, it wasn't safe to travel around. Now you just get on, to get to the airport, and it's safe. And you get to the plane, you get on the plane, it's safe. You land there, it's all safe. It's aman. It's safe for you. It's a big gift from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Whereas in pre-modern times, you'd have to you'd have to get bodyguards. Essentially, you'd have to have safety to get to locations. Right? There was no guarantee that you'd reach that location. And so, having this safety is also a big gift. For us living in the West, that we live in places, Darul Aman, we live in these places where there is a sense of safety, right? I mean, even if you look at the gun laws in the United States, right? I mean, here nobody carries guns, alhamdulillah, right? We don't need these things. So we have safety in our community, which is a big gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, this is what Islam as a civilization wants to achieve as well. It wants safety for everybody. Everybody should be safe. A Muslim is that person what? 
that other people are safe from you. They don't fear you. They feel safe with you. That they, they cherish being living, uh, living with Muslims. If you look in Islamic history, when Muslims were purged out of certain places, they were kicked out of certain places. We talk about Spain, we talk about many other places. And they, after what they realized what they'd lost. Uh, because Muslims had these values. So when we live here, and I'm digressing slightly, but when we live here amongst non-Muslims, right, what is our behavior like towards them? Do they want to live with us? Uh, do they appreciate our, our presence in their communities? So this is something to bear in mind as well. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned these three months, and then he mentioned the fourth month, which is the month of Rajab, which is the month that actually we are in, in this month right now as well. And because it was a month, the month of Rajab was also a month which was cherished by the Jahili Arabs before Islam as well. So Islam continues with this tradition. Many people think that Islam comes and it destroys everything that came before, right? And everything is haram before and all the rest of it. No, Islam, certain things which are in congruence with Allah's law and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we keep those things, right? And certain things which are completely haram and so forth, we don't engage in those things. So we have to remember that Islam is not about abolishing and destroying everything, right? This is not Islam. We have this in our fiqh, urf, this idea of custom, this idea of recognizing what people think is good, that's good, right? So we also have to understand this, that Islam has a cultural aspect to it as well. People say Islam is not a culture, but it does have a cultural aspect to it. So the Prophet ﷺ continued with this jahili practice of re- um, recognizing the significance of the month of Rajab. And this is of course passed on by Ibrahim as well. Um, so this is what the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, Wal Muharram wa Rajab. And then he said, Rajab al Mudar. This was a tribe. So in the hadith is, Wa Rajab al Mudar al Ladi Baina Jumari wa Sha'ban. So this is the Rajab, which is between Jamal al Akhir and Sha'ban. So remember, we have two months left until Ramadan now. Rajab and Sha'ban. So he said this, so Prophet ﷺ made it very clear because there was some ambiguity. They weren't sure when Rajab was. So Prophet ﷺ said, it's the one that tribe Mudar is following. So the Prophet also recognizes other tribes in terms of their practices. That this community, they may not be Muslims, but what they're doing is right. Can you see? So the Prophet ﷺ was, was very perceptive. Just because they were non-Muslims, he didn't say, oh, we don't have anything to do with them. He also recognized that sometimes non-Muslims might be doing something right as well. That we can learn from. Can you see this in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Our attitude is everything not to do with Islam. What we think is not to do with Islam, we throw it away. But the Prophet alaihi salatu wasallam, you see this in the seerah where he appreciated things from non-Muslims, as long as there was on the truth, as long as there was some truthness in it. This is something that's very, very special to the religion of Islam that we 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 strive to follow of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is the hadith of the month of Rajab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran as well the significance of this month. In the shuhur in the law is na ashra shahran fi kitabilah, Yoma khalaq as some Yoma khalaq as some awati wal arda, minha arbaadun hurum. So Allah takes it all the way back that the, the months in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are 12 months in a year, right? And this is what's been written, preordained for you before time. Before time, Allah had already preordained for you that the months in a year would be 12 months. And the four months will be sacred. The four months will be sacred. Next week I'll talk about why they are sacred. But four months are sacred as Allah mentions in the Quran. This is the deen. This is the deen that you follow. This is the religion that you follow. Allah says something very, very important here. He says, don't oppress yourself in these months. So the month of Rajab, which is the month that we are in right now. I'll talk about some of the virtues next week. But let me... Uh, at least mention one thing, just at least so we have something to work with next week, insha'Allah. So, this is a very sacred month. Imam Abu Bakr al Warraq al Balkhi, Rahmatullahi Ali, he is also the uncle of Imam Tirmidhi, Rahmatullahi Ali, said that Shahr uh, Rajab, Miftahu Ashur al Khayr wal Baraka, that the month of Rajab, the month of Rajab that we are in, it's the key, it's the key of Khayr and Baraka, goodness and Baraka, this month that we are in right now. And then he continues saying, Shahr Rajab, Shahr Zara. The month of Rajab is when you plant your seeds. I.e. Tayyar Koro. Get ready for the month of Ramadan. Yeah? It's the month of planting your seeds. Plant your seeds. Get ready. Get into the habit of praying Quran. Get into the habit of coming to the masjid regularly. Alhamdulillah, masjid is still open. 
right? Get into the habit of staying away from sins. Maybe fasting a little bit. So you're getting ready for the month of Ramadan. Then he continues, وَشَهْرُ شَعْبَانِ شَهْرُ السَّقِيِّ لِلْزَرَى In the month of Sha'ban, you plant, your, 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 you water your seeds rather. You planted your seeds, and the next month comes, then you water. You start getting ready. You're getting, you're getting prepared for the shoots to come out of the ground. Just like we're seeing in spring now, the shoots are coming out of the ground. And then finally he says, Rahmatullahi Ali, wa shahru Ramadan, shahru hisar is The month of Ramadan is when you take your crops. When you take your crops. You've been working hard for the last two months, you've been watering, planting the seeds, cultivating yourself. And it's very interesting that Allah in the Quran uses nature and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uses nature time and time again to make us reflect. So I'll continue inshallah next week with more about the month of Rajab. There's a lot to be said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to prepare for the month, the sacred month of Ramadan. The month of Rajab is here, we're two months away. Allah give us all tawfiq. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdika, nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. Jazakallah.